welcome to Surviving Winter Driving. <laughs> As we know, winter is here. My name is Karen Blackburn. I'm a traffic safety specialist for AAA Northeast. And we know that the Farmer's Almanac says winter is coming. We want to brace ourselves. 2021, winter will be a cold, wild mix. All right. We could be hit with brutally cold and snow with the snowy spears between being between mid-December to early March. And even if it turns out to be mild, we wanna be prepared for surviving winter driving. The day we're filming this, we got hit with a little bit of snow. We wanna be prepared. So our workshop today is gonna to cover some pre-storm preparation for your vehicle and some safe driving tips for maneuvering on ice and snow if you do have to go out. So we do have a few tongue in cheek slides in here. Uh, you know, for example, safety tips for driving in the snow, install your winter tires, drive south, <laughs> continue until you see palm trees and then apply brakes and sunscreen. Huh, don't we wish we could all do that? But no, we live in the Northeast, so we're gonna have to do some other things. So first and foremost, there are two types of people. We have the type of person who's in our top photo that says, I shouldn't drive in the snow. And then we have the other people on the bottom that love driving in the snow and are doing you know, donuts in the parking lot. But I'm going to tell you, if you can, just stay home. But if you have to go out, I want you to plan ahead. I want you to listen to the forecasts and don't underestimate. I find that our news forecasters, um, our weather forecasters do tend to give us the worst case scenario. And we should probably listen to that. It's better to plan for the worst and hope for the best. Now we are gonna be talking a little bit about the seven cold sensitive spots in your car. I'm not a mechanic. We do have plenty of mechanics and um, vehicle experts that are at AAA. But I'm figured that the average person that's listening to this program is also not a mechanic, but there are some easy things that we can take a look at to make sure that your car is ready. First is your tires. Now your tires are the thing that comes in contact with the ground. And if your tires aren't ready, we could end up with a spin out just like you see in our picture. So we have to know that most tires lose a pound of pressure for every 10 degree drop and they lose about a pound a month. That means you have to check your tires. And many people will tell us, oh, well, my car has a tire pressure monitoring system and I wait for that to go off. But I want you to still use a gauge because once that system goes off in your car, your tires may be 25% too low already. And if they're low, they're not going to grip the road the way that they should. So I might recommend get a portable compressor so you don't have to go to a gas station to fill it, put the air in your tires. Uh, and again, a portable compressor, very easy to use. They frequently come uh, with, you just insert it into the, um, where the uh, lighter thing is in the car. It's also not a bad idea to get four dedicated winter tires. Winter tires, very expensive. If you can swing it, that's your safest bet as well. All right. I mentioned before about tire pressure and I'm gonna say that in your car, maybe we don't know how much tire pressure needs to be in here again. I'm not a mechanic, but this is super easy. Right inside, as you open up your driver's side door, there's a sticker that looks just like this. And it has, what is the recommended PSI? That's your pounds per square inch. And if you look at this vehicle, there we go, right over here, it's recommending that the front tire has 41 pounds per square inch and our rear tire, 38 pounds per square inch. And it's so easy to find this, this information. It's right inside the door jam. That little sticker is in every single car. And if for some reason it was not in your car, it's in your owner's manual. So we wanna make sure we get a little tire pressure gauge. Doesn't have to be fancy. You just stick it right on the, on the valve. The little flag comes out and it'll tell you exactly what your tire pressure is. We also wanna make sure that the treads on your tires are good. And if you look, I, this is our quarter test. We want to put the head in the tread. Your treads have four, your tires have four treads going right across the width of the tire. And if you take a quarter, insert it upside down, we should not be able to see the top of George Washington's head. 
If your tires are overinflated, that's not good because your tires are going to wear improperly. And the same thing if they're underinflated. Not the entire surface of the tire is not going to touch the ground. It's not going to grip. And those treads, if they're not deep enough, will not wick the water away as you're driving. So we want to pay attention to that. After you're done watching this show, I want you to take a quarter, go outside, go check your tires, make sure that the treads are good, make sure that the pressure is good. Let's move on. The battery is our next area that's sensitive to the cold. Now, frequently our batteries get damaged in the heat because of the, in the summer because of the heat, but they fail us in the winter. A fully charged battery has 100% starting powder at 80 degrees outside. That's a warm, sunny day. But at 32 degrees, it drops by a third. And at zero, it has only 40% of the starting power. That's why on a cold day, you might hear that. <laughs> so the best thing that you could do is get a load test. You can do this at your mechanic, or you can get this from AAA. They can determine where your battery is at. And I will tell you that the average lifespan of a battery in the Northeast area is about five years. So even if you think, oh, I don't use my car that much, you know what, five years, it's time to look at getting a new one. I mentioned AAA does have a battery service where they will come to your house, they will test your battery to see what the load is at. And if your battery is not functioning well enough, they do have batteries right on their truck so you don't have to go anywhere. It's a nice feature that is for AAA members. The next area is our radiator. And we wanna make sure that we're going to make sure that the antifreeze is in there and that it matches your car, what your car needs. So you can find that in your owner's manual. Antifreeze formulas work best when you mix them 50-50 with water or you can buy them pre-mixed or you can dilute it yourself. Or if you're a little chicken about doing that, take it to the mechanic and say, hey, can you make sure that I have enough antifreeze? That's the right kind for my car. They're gonna be able to do that for you as well. Moving on, we wanna have windshield washer fluid that is going to uh, have a fluid that contains methanol and they should have a freezing point that is at least 20 degrees below zero. And you wanna make sure you top it off. I have some pictures here of a couple of products. I'm not here to push either of those products, but I can tell you that. The Prestone de-icer, the Rain-X de-icer, both of those are very good at beating up the water and keeping those windshields nice and clean. The last thing that you want to have is for your windshield to uh, fog up to or to have things accumulate on it. And we want to make sure that we're going to keep it nice and clean. <sighs> well, our wiper blades. Now in the picture, you can see <laughs> we have an eternal debate at our AAA office. Keep the wipers up, put the wipers down. And I do want to let you know that your wipers can become hard and brittle in the cold weather. Okay, and if they become hard and brittle, they can tear if there's little ice particles left on the windshield. So you, some people will try to, as soon as you get in the car, turn the wipers on to clear the windshield of the snow or ice. And all that ice gets caked onto those wipers and it damages the wipers. They do make a thing called winter blades. Okay, they're a little more durable and made of a different compound that can handle the cold weather just a little bit better. But what I recommend is clear the windshield with a brush, scrape it, use the defroster before using the wipers. Get that windshield nice and warm from the inside and that may make that a little bit easier. My recommendation is uh, I usually keep the wipers up and that makes it easier for me to clear the windshield with the brush before I attempt to use the wipers, okay? Uh, again, we have a lot of debate in our AAA office about keep them up, keep them down. Most people say, put them up if you know the snow is coming. Next is your engine oil. And again, this might be something that maybe you're uncomfortable to say, oh, I don't know what to do with this, but we're gonna follow the specs in your owner's manual. We wanna use a multi-grade oil and that indicates the oil's viscosity below freezing. The lower the number, the thinner the oil in cold temperatures. And, and on that container, it'll tell you W in the number stands for winter oil. Again, you can have your mechanic check this, or if you have somebody who knows what they're doing, that's good too. And finally, we're looking at the serpentine belt. And I'm sure some of you who are watching this and say, I don't know what the serpentine belt is. Again, if you open up the hood and you're looking and you see any kind of belt or anything in there that looks cracked or brittle, 
We know that that can't be a good thing. So that you do want to make sure to take to the mechanic, anything that looks cracked or worn, get it replaced. Don't let that wait. That can be very dangerous if you leave it that way and, and it does fail you. All right. Uh, did you ever feel like you forgot to do something important? I always feel bad for people who left the window open, but look at this person, they left their sunroof open. Yikes, not good. All right, let's take a look at items that we need to put in the car before the snowstorm. Really, we should have some of these items always in the car, but some particularly for the winter. For example, I want you to make sure that you have a good brush or ice scraper. Get one that has a long telescoping handle. Uh, some people I know have little teeny tiny ones. Well, you know what? If you're short like me, I know you can't tell that I'm short, but I'm pretty short. I can't reach very far. Get one with a telescoping handle. Make sure that you have a portable shovel. And again, they're everywhere in the stores now. Home Depot, your CVS, your Walgreens, they're everywhere. Get one, stick it in the back of the car. I want you to get a bag of kitty litter or some kind of abrasive material, whether it is sand, ice melt, uh, something that if your tires start to spin a little bit, you can put this under and it'll help get a little bit better grip on the road. I want you to have some extra items in the car for worst case scenarios, have a blanket, extra gloves, hat, socks. And the reason that I say that because you know, the worst case scenario is you get out of the car, you step in, a big puddle of ice or a puddle of, and, and now your foot is totally wet for the rest of your ride home or wherever it is that you're going. So if you have some extras in the car, it'll help keep you a little bit drier. If you uh, take medication, you may wanna have spare medications, um, a water, have some non-perishable snacks, just you know keep them handy in the car, as well as an emergency kit. Now, I will tell you that most stores, most um, auto repair supply stores, Target, all of our AAA stores sell emergency roadside kits for the car and they might come with a lot of the things that you see in my diagram. And if it says, oh, there's 150 pieces in this kit, I do want you to take a look at the contents. <laughs> Some of those, 25 of those 150 items might be Band-Aids. We might not need that many Band-Aids, but you do wanna make sure you have jumper cables, that you have some kind of triangle, that you have a poncho. I see that that's an item that's in our kit that we have here. We wanna make sure that you have a flashlight, that you have um, a flashlight that's different from just your cell phone. I have one that clips actually onto my jacket so I don't need to use my hands to hold it. If you have an extra portable phone charger, that might be something that you might wanna keep in the car. All things to think ahead of and not be on the road and get stuck and say, oh, I wish I had that now. All right. Now, let's talk about if you have to drive. I want you to plan ahead that you have enough time for your car to warm up. And as you can see in the picture, I know we have all seen people who are driving like this with a big chunk of snow or ice on the car. But I'm going to tell you, I want you to clear all the snow from the roof from the windows, from the side mirrors. Failure to do so could result in a ticket. And I want you to clear the snow from the tailpipe if it's parked and the snow has built up because I don't want carbon monoxide to build up inside your car while you're busy clearing it off. Do the tailpipe first. I also want you to make sure that you keep the gas tank at least half full at all times. And that might seem excessive, but it'll prevent condensation uh, from building up in your gas tank. If you have to drive on ice and snow, I wanna tell you, you gotta do everything in moderation, accelerating, driving, stopping. I want you to imagine that you have a, an open, hot cup of coffee that is balanced between your knees. And if you drive too fast, it is spilling all over you and that won't be good. And you know that if you step on the gas, boom, you feel yourself go back. That's upsetting the balance of the vehicle. If you step on the brake really hard, you feel your whole body going forward. That's upsetting the balance of the vehicle. So we're going to make sure we're no, no zoomy zoom on the slicky slick if you go boomy boom in the ditchy ditch and have to wait for a toey toe in the cold snowy snow. Everything in moderation. And again, if you have to drive, gentle pressure on the accelerator. 
All right, if your tires are spinning, they're only gonna dig deeper in the snow. So pressing on that accelerator is not gonna help. You may try rocking the vehicle back and forth, forward, back, forward, back. And again, I mentioned already that you can get out, throw a little kitty litter under the substance, use the shovel to maybe dig out around the tires. All right, I want you to make sure that you have ample clearance from oncoming traffic. So if you're driving on a two-way road and you have, or a four-lane road, two lanes in one direction, two lanes in the other, you may be safer staying closer to the right if you can, because an oncoming vehicle who maybe has lost traction may veer into your lane. So I want you to be aware, traffic coming from all direction could be dangerous. I want you to recognize that the difference between your driveway and the street you live on uh, your street, your driveway may be less well-paved, your street may be okay, but once you get out onto the well-paved road, all of those levels of traction may be different. So you want to, again, make sure that you have enough space to get out or to get into wherever it is that you're going. Leave a little extra. And if you can, try to stick to the main roads. They're likely to be better plowed and uh, maybe a little bit safer. All right, I mentioned before about increasing your following distances. Normally we would recommend in good conditions that we wanna have between three and four seconds between your vehicle and the car ahead of you. We wanna increase that so that if you need to get around a vehicle that gets stuck, you have room to do so. And you also might wanna watch that car ahead of you. If they are fishtailing, you can anticipate that maybe you are going to have the same situation, or if they're struggling to get up a slight incline, well, decrease your speed a little bit, give that vehicle enough space, because if they start heading backwards, because their car is slipping, they may be coming in your direction. If you can steer around them, steer around them. We wanna gently reduce our speeds going downhill. That probably goes without saying, we want to be careful on our exit and entrance ramps. You notice frequently on the overhead signs on the highways, it says entrance ramps may be icy. So be prepared, reduce your speed, get a good grip, say a little prayer. And we definitely don't want to use cruise control. And again, you shouldn't really be traveling fast enough to say, hmm, I think I could use cruise control. Cruise control will tell your car to speed up and it may accelerate when you don't want it to accelerate. So it's not just for ice and snow, that's for rain as well. Um, let's talk about the different drives, wheel drives in your car. We have front wheel drive, we have four wheel drive, we have all wheel drive, and we wanna know what's the difference. Um, I have a daughter who feels, oh, I have, all a four wheel drive, I can do whatever I want. And that is not the case. Regardless, if you have front wheel drive that puts a little more weight in the front or a little more control in the front, four wheel drive that is better for off road driving and all wheel drive, which is better for, you know, our generic, our regular kind of roadways, it doesn't really matter. We still wanna make sure that we're driving with care and not driving irresponsibly because we think we may have better stopping control. It doesn't mean we have better stopping control. All right, steering and skidding. Now, I'm sure that everyone who is watching this has at one point or another done a little fishtail or skidded somewhere. And I think our natural response when we start to skid is to slam on the brakes. And you can see from my slide, it says everyone slammed on their brakes to stare at the first car that slid into the ravine it locked their brakes and send them skidding into the ravine as well. We don't want that to happen. Skidding is usually caused by speeds too fast for the conditions or a hard acceleration or a hard braking. Quick jerky movements, that's what usually causes our skidding situations. So we wanna avoid that. And I mentioned before, no sudden movements. But if you do find that your vehicle is starting to skid or fishtail a little bit, I want you to look and steer in the direction that you want to go, all right? And that steering is preferred to braking to go where you wanna go, especially at speeds higher than 25 miles an hour. Look and steer, look and steer in the direction you wanna go. It might take a little bit and it might be a little bit scary, 
and it's not guaranteed that it will 100% work. But again, if you are following all the other guidelines and not taking speeds too fast, chances are your car will even out enough. If you have to drive in fog or limited visibility, uh, sudden whiteout on the road, I don't want you to use your high beams. Your high beams will aim your, those high beams to the particles that are actually closer to your eye level, and you are going to be magnifying those droplets. So I want you to just use your regular beams. And if you can't see anything, well, well don't try to stay on the road. You gotta try to get off the road. If you're on a highway, look for an overpass, all right? There frequently is enough of a, a, a shoulder that you can go there to wait it out till it clears up a little bit better. And because there's no snow accumulating under that overpass, uh, you may be able to sit there for, for a safe amount of time. Stop in a parking lot. Follow a plow. If you're following a plow, leave a little bit of space because they do kick up um, debris maybe from the roadway, but you'll be able to see because that plow will have its lights on and they will be leaving you a clear path. Now, this is an age old question. Should I leave the car or should I stay? You get stuck and, and what do you do? Do you stay in the car? And I'm going to tell you it's different in every circumstance. So you have to ask yourself, are you prepared for the harsh weather if you have to go, if you're gonna leave your car? And are you close enough to safe shelter that leaving your car is viable. In this photo, you can see this is a beautiful winter road, but I don't think there's anything anywhere nearby. In this situation, maybe I'm better off to stay in my car. I don't know. Here's what we're gonna do if we're gonna stay with the car. Number one, clear the exhaust pipe with the shovel that you packed or get out periodically to check and make sure that it's clear. Let the car run until it's warm and then shut it off to save fuel. You don't know how long you're gonna be stuck there. I want you to keep your seatbelt on. If for some reason, another vehicle should hit your car because they did not see you, you've got your seatbelt on and you won't get thrown in the vehicle, all right? Uh, we wanna keep your flashers, your emergency flashers on so that cars do see you. And I want you to avoid using up your phone battery. Now, we mentioned before, if you kept in your car an extra charger, that's great. But I know some people who would be busy on their social media, checking their Facebook, checking their Twitter. I'm so stuck on the road. But if you're using up your battery, well, you might need that for an emergency. So try to stay off the phone. Do call your roadside service. Do call for emergency. Now, if you do need to leave the car, you decide it's safe enough for you to get out, be, per be aware where you're leaving it. If you are leaving it in the middle of the road, well, you're gonna be in the way of a plow. Try to get the car as close to the side or on the shoulder as possible. I want you to leave a note. What time did you leave your car and where were you headed? So others maybe who come across your car will know that you're okay or where to find you. But again, I need you to be prepared to face the harsh weather. Did you pack those boots or are you wearing a cheap pair of sneakers? Do you have a coat with a, with a hood or a hat, or are you going to um, face the elements unprepared? Those are things you need to know. All right, in summary, I want you to stay home if you can. Stay, and again, with many people working from home, you know, be prepared, this is great. Stay home if you can. I want you to prepare your car for an emergency now. If you are elderly and cannot shovel out your driveway on your own, or even if you're not elderly, arrange in advance. Who can? Go to your local hardware store. Ask your neighbor who's got a snow plow or who's got a snow blower. Hey, can you help me with the end of the driveway? Do that in advance so you're not caught in an emergency. If you are out driving, we wanna drive in moderation with speed, braking, distancing, we wanna keep your vision clear by clearing off the car. And finally, I want you to know your roadside service. Some roadside services will not come out in, in a blizzard to get you out. Or if you are calling them, please know you're putting them at risk. You are putting them at risk because they have to come out to get you. 
Some roadside services will not get your car out of a ditch if it's they deem that they cannot do it, or they may charge extra if your car is in a ditch and it takes several vehicles uh, to do that. So again, bullet number one, stay home if you can. Try to follow all of those guidelines and hopefully we'll have a safe time surviving our winter. Let's keep our fingers crossed it won't be too bad this year, all right? Uh, here's my contact information. If you have any questions, the best place to reach me is through my email, kblackburn at aaanortheast.com. And uh, if you enjoyed this presentation, I'd love to hear from you. If you have things you think I should add, shoot me an email as well. All right, let's have a safe day, safe time in, the, in our snow. Have a great day. Bye-bye now.